Jesus. Give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Eric, good morning. Thank you, Lord. Aminata, good morning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. You spared my life and you made me whole. You spared my life and you made me whole. You spared my life and you made me whole. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's it just it's just a new song. I I just started singing. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Audrey. Thank you, Lord. Can you thank the Lord with me this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Father, this morning, I want to say thank you. I am so grateful to you, Lord, that throughout the night, Whatever the enemy plotted against us, against our children, against our husbands, against our wives, against our family, Lord. If you had permitted it, I, Sylvia, I know I would not have been alive this morning. But your right hand, oh God, stopped the hand of the enemy from prevailing against us. And for this reason, Papa, this morning we say thank you. A million thanks. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you for your people. A spirit of the living God, I'm asking this morning that you will gather your people. Let your wind blow in the four corners of the earth and gather your people on this platform because you have a work for us to do. 
And Father, I want to honor you and I want to adore you because of your great name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' life-changing name. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. And, um, oh, wow, Indianapolis, the Lord bless you. I want to say, oh, Camellia, the Lord bless you. I want to say to every one of you, God bless you for tuning in this morning. And um, I see um, some of my favorite people on the face of the earth. Good morning, Sue. I see some of my favorite um, people. Everybody is, is, is God's favorite. But there are people that are very close to my heart. And um, this morning, I am blessed because I see them on. I am blessed. Prophet Joe. I see Prophet Joe on. <laughs> oh, my God. This man is here. I see Prophet Joe on and I bless God, you know, for your life. Honorable Joe. Um, uh, Honorable Joe. Honorable Sam. The Lord bless you. I see you on this morning. And um, <clears throat> you are one of you know, those people that um, gives us encouragement to, to move on. <laughs> because sometimes I tell you, sometimes, oh, oh, good morning, honey. Sue, good morning. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. Good morning. You are, you know, one of those people that encourages us and motivates us and pray for us and pushes us up, you know, to, to do what God has called us to do. And um, sometimes we really want to throw in the towel. Now, every one of you, the Lord bless you and I love you. I mean, this love is genuine, okay? It's not a fake love. I really love you. And um, you know, we've been doing a series on envy. <clears throat> Excuse me. On envy. And um, early this morning, the wee hours of the morning, I was awake. And um, the Lord gave me an assignment. It's not, it's not that um, the subject of envy is ended, no. But, you know, uh, the Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. It's good for us to obey than to do what we want and feel like doing, okay? And so this morning, I have an assignment from the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> this assignment is going to be fulfilled. Because I believe there's somebody watching me this morning. Either the person is on. Or God is about to bring the person on the line. And um, <clears throat> even though this word is tailored for somebody, I also believe that every one of you on the, on the line this morning, uh, something, your eyes is going to be open. And um, whatever God has assigned you to do, many of us give up so easily. And um, God wants us to... Um, just take a stand and, and focus on, on every assignment that God has given unto you and I. And so I am not deviating from, you know, from um, the, the topic envy, but I am obeying God because he asked me to do this this morning. And so, oh, thank you this morning for all the love and all the kisses. I love you. I love you back. And so I'm not deviating from it, but I am all oh, great. I am not de um, deviating from it, but I want you to um, know what God wants you to know this morning by the grace of the living God. And so, um, listen to me, child of God, somebody. Listen to me, my darling. Listen to me, wonderful child of God. Listen to me. Listen to me. God has an assignment for you. And that assignment, whether you like it or not, whether your enemies likes it or not, that assignment ought to be fulfilled. And so, like I said, I'm not deviating from the subject, but I want to obey what the Lord told me to do. And so that is where I want to dwell on this morning. And uh, let's go straight into the word of the living God. All right? All right. Let's go into the word of the living God. And so this morning, I want us to look at Jeremiah chapter 20. And uh, we are going to look at what God wants us to look at this morning. Jeremiah chapter 20. So let's look at it. Let's look at it. Jeremiah chapter 20. 
Jeremiah chapter 20. Ah, you know, I, I have blessed assurance. I am hearing that song in my spirit. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation and I'm purchased of God and I'm born of his spirit and I'm washed in his blood. Let me say it again. Blessed are assurance. I know that Jesus, he is mine. And oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation and I'm purchased of God. I know I'm born of His, His Spirit and I'm washed, I'm washed in His blood. This is my story, yes, and this is my song and I'm praising my Savior all the day long and this is my story oh and this is my song and I'm praising my Savior all the day long. I don't know about you, but this is my story. I know that this is my song and I'm praising, I'm praising, I'm praising, I'm praising my Savior. And this is my story. Oh, and this is my song. And I'm praising my Savior all the day long. And this is my story. I don't know the kind of story you have, but this is my song. And this morning I'm praising my Savior all day, not some of the day, all the day long. And this is my story. And this is my song and I'm praising my I Savior all day, day long and I'm praising my Savior all the day long through the good and the bad i'm praising my savior all the day long this is my story <laughs> and this is my song and i'm praising my Savior all the day long and, and this is my story yes and this is my song and I'm praising 
Oh yes, I'm praising. Oh yes, I'm praising. When my back is against the wall, I'm praising. When I don't have no money, I'm praising. When I'm sick in my body, I'm praising. My Savior. All day, day long, and I'm praising my Savior. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm praising my Savior, the one who died for me. I'm praising my Savior, the one who was spit on. I'm praising my Savior, the one who was hung naked. I'm praising my Savior all that day long. Mm. Perfect submission, <laughs> perfect delight, all oh, visions of heaven and, and joy on my side. I am watching and I'm waiting and I'm looking above, oh, and I'm filled with his his goodness oh god <laughs> this morning let me tell you something let me tell you something your assignment in life ought to be fulfilled and i want us to look at a mighty prophet a major prophet in the bible we have Minor prophets, Osman, good morning, honey. We have minor prophets and we have major ones. And somebody like Jeremiah was not a minor prophet. Jeremiah was a major, major prophet. Now, in, um, in the... Um, um, ha, 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 in the, um, the, um, the prophetic, we have occasional prophets. Occasional prophets are the people that, you know, will prophesy occasionally as they are being led by the spirit of the living God. And so, you know, occasionally, you know, once in a while, they're not, you know, once in a while they prophesy. And then we have operational prophets. Operational prophets are the one that prophesies all the time. They prophesy all the time. Operational prophet. And then we have administrative prophets. Oh God. And these prophets are sent by God. They are in the office of a prophet. We have, you know, people that have the gift of prophecy and they prophesy, you know, once in a while, you know. And um, as the Spirit of the Lord give them utterance, they prophesy. And then we have major, I mean, major prophet. I mean, you know, administrative prophet. I mean, prophet that, you know, are in the office and uh, they, 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 they are in there because God himself calls them in there. And some of them are assigned into nations. And, and some of them, you know, major prophets prophesy concerning, um, you know, issues that are about to happen in, in countries. Sometimes, maybe days before or weeks before. And um, they will bring out that prophetic word. And um, every prophetic word that does not come to pass. Honey, you better watch it. I am not going into that area there, but I want us, it's, it's, it's about an assignment. And so that's where I'm going. And so by the grace of God, and I say this with all humility, I believe that in this end time, the prophetic anointing is upon my life. By the grace of God, I say it with all humility. But I may not be a major prophet where I prophesy into you know, major things that are about to happen. And when you read history, 
there are there are people that God called and uh, you know major major prophets and and some of them their voices were not recorded because in those days they have nothing to record and so their voices were not recorded and some of them but it was written it was written they were not recorded but it was written like I'm talking about voice recording but it was written and some of them prophesied thousands of years you know, um, um, ago, and their prophetic utterances are coming to pass. Oh, good morning, Jennifer. And their prophetic utterances. Oh, happy birthday, my darling. And their prophetic utterances are coming to pass now in, in this dispensation. And um, trust me, by the grace of God, I have met prophets. Oh, God, because of um, the gift God, you know, um, you know gave me. Um, I have met a whole bunch of prophets. Trust me, I have met every, I mean, I have really met some. I've not met everybody, but I've met some by the grace of God. And um, some of them, uh, they give you a prophetic word and, and they, they have um, date on it and time. Oh God, date and time. And the exact time they uttered that voice and then they will tell you that write the date and write the time. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, oh, good day, good day, Agnes. For example, um, if, um, you know, they'll say, um, you know, to you, um, it's an example. They'll say to you, uh, that says the Lord, okay? Or this is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that tomorrow around 12 noon, around 12 noon, um, something major is about to happen in your life. And it's going to be um, um, something that will transform your life for good. And exactly 12, exactly 12, the prophetic word that was spoken, exactly 12. I mean, it will not be 1201 or 1202, exactly 12. That prophetic word comes to pass. Now, I've met a whole bunch of prophets and one, one person um, that, I mean, I'm not you know, putting anybody, you know, out there. But one person that um, I encountered a couple of years ago and uh, every word he spoke, my God, and he gave the time and the date to it. And just as he prophesied, that word came to pass. That time and that date is Prophet Hanok. Uh, uh, Prophet Hanok, you know, Central Gospel Prophet Hanok. Um, I've met him, you know, m many, many prophets. And, 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 I mean, that man is something else. Okay, I'm not putting anybody out there, please. And so uh, there are major, 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 you know, uh, and that some of us that God has called into the prophetic, we may not be a major prophet, okay? And uh, uh, maybe God is starting with us. Maybe God has called you to be a major prophet or a major prophetess. But but as time goes on, um, when whilst you keep practicing, whilst you allow the Spirit of the Lord um, to, to use you, to prophesy into into lies then the prophetic word you know bec becomes very sharp because it's a gift and so you perfect that gift and becomes very very sharp now it comes with fastings it comes with prayer it comes with you sowing seeds okay i've never met any prophet that is stingy i've never met one never maybe i'm yet to meet one but i've never met any prophet that is stingy i mean tight face no any prophet I have I have met in my life by the grace of God are givers, and so it's part of it. And so now I want us to take a look into a man's life, um, a prophet, a major prophet's life, because the Lord this morning, this morning, um, you know the Bible says that every idle word that goes out of your mouth will be judged by God. And so I am very careful what I say because I don't want to say anything that God has not said. Because a day is coming, I have to stand before God, and then God says, well, I didn't say that to you. Why did you say that? And I'll be in trouble. I don't want to be in any trouble with the Lord. And so when the Lord speaks to me, I come and I say what God is saying, and I pray that whatever he has said to me, I'll be able to say it the way he told me to say it. Not to add to it, not to subtract from it, but to say it the way he wants it said all right the way he want it said and so um let's 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 go into all oh, the word of the lord i think give me one second i think i lost um the people on periscope and i have to connect back to them because if not i know i'm going to get a whole bunch of phone calls and um i really don't want you know that happening and so um let's connect back just give me one second 
let's go let connect back to um, those that are watching on Periscope because I don't want to lose them on Periscope because then you know some of them you know what I mean you know what I mean all right and so <clears throat> excuse me mm, Lord help me this morning and so look let's look at um, a man by the name Jeremiah uh, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 20 let's look at it okay let's look at it let's look at it and so Jeremiah chapter 20 um, I want us to start reading from verse 7 it's very interesting um, you know when I read the Bible I try my best okay um, to um, take it a word at a time I you know of course I read a whole sentence but there are certain words that pops up by the Spirit of God and 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 I try my best to look into that particular word and find out what is the real meaning and what was God saying you know when he quoted that particular or, or when he quoted that particular word or he spoke that particular word what was God saying or what was the meaning or what was behind what was said and so I want to start reading it from the um, King James Bible and then I will jump to the New Living Translation I like the New Living Translation and the the Good News Bible and uh, it gives us you know um, you know different you know um, um, views on it and so he says this is Jeremiah speaking he says oh Lord thou hast deceived me and I was deceived <laughs> thou art stronger than I and has prevailed I am in derision daily every one mock at me I want you to look at your Bible please take your Bible whatever and just look at it for since I speak I cry out I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily then I said I would not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name mm. <clears throat> let's look at it honey Excuse me, my darlings. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Verse 10. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will, say they, and we will report it. All my familiar, all my familiars watched for a halting, saying, per adventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Now, I want to read it um, in the um, New Living Translation. Oh, Lord. Jeremiah chapter twenty. Verse 7, and I'm going to put my Bible down. I'm going to talk to you. Oh, Lord, you misled me, and I allowed myself to be misled. <laughs> Why was Jeremiah saying that? He did not know that he taking on the assignment of God came with persecution, came with lies, came with resentment, came with killings. He had no idea that when he said, yes, sir, I will do your work. He had no idea that he came with all these things. And so Jeremiah said, oh, Lord, you misled me. In other words, you didn't tell me that, that I was going to face all these persecutions. That's not what you told me. If you had told me, you know, sometimes, let me say something to you. Sometimes you hear men of God saying, that if I knew that this was what I was going to encounter, I would have not have said yes to God to do his work. 
You've heard that before, right? Can I be honest with you? I've said that before. Lord, forgive. I've said that before. That if I knew that I'm going to go through A, B, C, D, then Lord, you should have allowed me to, to, to become what I really wanted to become. And so, let me read, okay? And then when I put my Bible down, we'll talk. He says, oh Lord, you misled me. And I allowed myself to be misled. Look at, look at Jeremiah. He was very frank with God, you know? And I allowed myself to be misled. You are stronger than I am. And you overpowered me. <laughs> oh God. You are stronger than I am. And you overpowered me. Now, I am mocked every day. Everyone laughs at me. When I speak, the words burst out. In other words, I am not educated. And I'm not refined. Jeremiah said, Lord, you know, I'm not refined. I'm not cultured. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, how I'm not polished. That's what Jeremiah was saying. It's like, Lord, you know, I, I am really not, I'm not polished. I'm not, I'm not refined. And so anytime you speak to me and um, I bring out your word, people begin to laugh. They are laughing at me because they think that, my goodness, this man is too raw. You know, the other day, somebody posted one of the videos, of my videos, on the page, on her page. And I don't know who the person is. Posted it on her page. And uh, the, um, the person made, a, you know, um, for example, okay, they posted the picture. And you know, it, has, it comes with a heading. And so the person wrote on top of the, 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 the post, you know, the video. And then the person wrote this one. This one. And so when I saw it, because, you know, some, I, I take time and I go through all, you know, the comments all of you make and I respond. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, you get good response. Sometimes, you know, other people, that's, that's part of the ministry. And so, um, when I saw this one, I said to myself, why that topping, this one? And then underneath it, somebody made a comment. And the person says, I'm so afraid of her. Two things. On top, it says this one. <clears throat> And then somebody made a comment and said, I'm so afraid of her. Now, when I saw that, I wanted to respond. And the Lord said, leave it alone because I want to talk to you. I said, yes, sir. And God says, do you know why the heading, this one? is because in the realms of the spirit, they have noticed you. You are noticed in the realms of the spirit. And so, they are doing and they are looking for whoever this person is. And so, this particular person is giving them a signal that this is the person, this is the woman. She is the one. And the Lord said, I want you to know that what you are doing, because it is of me, you have gotten the attention. Of the forces of darkness. I'm saying something to you this morning. Oh listen to me my darling. Listen to me. And so. The Holy Ghost says now. Thank you darling. The Holy Ghost says now. You have become a target. Because. There are many things happening in the kingdom of God. That people are not talking about. Because they are afraid. They are not going to get their offerings anymore. The tithe is not going to come anymore. Because if you start talking about envy, if this one is envying that one, and you know, it's, it's a whole bunch. So people are not talking about it anymore. It has become hush-hush. And so now that you are 
allowing me to use you to open the eyes of many, you have become the target of the enemy. Oh, glory be to God. Jeremiah said, I allowed yourself to mislead me. Because you know what? I didn't know that all these things comes with being in the ministry. I didn't know. This is Jeremiah. I had no idea. So let's go on. He says, now I am mocked every day. Everyone laughs at me. When I speak, the word burst out. Okay, so I'm not cultured at all. I mean, you know, I'm raw. Okay, and so the, the words burst out. Violence and destruction. I shout. So these messages from the Lord have made me a household joke. Oh, these messages from the Lord has made me a household joke. I'm going somewhere. When I finish, I'll put it down. I'm, talk, I'm going to talk to you. He says, has made me a household joke, verse 9. But if I say I will never mention the Lord or speak his name, his word burns in my heart like fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold it in. I am worn out. I try to hold the word of the Lord in. Oh, let me finish reading and I'll put it down. I'm trying to hold it in. I can't do it. I, I so, <laughs> somebody Amelia says poor Jeremiah. <laughs> oh my God, she says poor Jeremiah. You, okay, so he says, I can't do it. I can't do it. Verse eleven says, verse ten. Excuse me. He says, I have heard the many rumors about me. They call me the man who lives in terror. They threaten. If they say anything, we will report it. Or if you say anything, we will report it. And so they are threatening Jeremiah. They threaten, if you say anything, we will report it. Even my old friends are watching me, waiting for my fatal slip. He will trap himself, they say. And then we will get our revenge on him. But the Lord stands beside me like a great warrior. Before whom my persecutors will stumble. They cannot defeat me. They will fail and be thoroughly humiliated. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Oh Lord of heaven's army. You test those who are righteous and you examine the deepest thought and secret. Let me see your revenge against them for I have committed my cause to you. Let's talk. Like I said in the beginning, Jeremiah was not a minor prophet Jeremiah was a um, you know a, a major prophet and um, some really called him a weeping prophet because anytime he prophesied of the things that God was showing to him or God was speaking to him he wept have you ever seen people prophesying in church and as they just begin to prophesy this they cry and um, Jeremiah was known as um, a weeping prophet. And so, Jeremiah now comes to a place in his life where he was minding his own business, doing whatever he had to do. Then all of a sudden, the Lord now picks him up and says to him, before you were blood of cloth in your mother's womb, I, I knew you. And I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. In other words, you were not an ordinary person. And then I later stamped you or sealed you with the, uh, the, with the, um, the ministry of the prophetic. No, even before you were born, 
I, God, in other words, I knew you, you existed before you were born. And before you came into your mother's womb, I ordained you as a prophet. You were, you were, you were an ordained prophet before, um, couple, I think it was last year, I had the privilege of um, interviewing um, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. I had the, 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 the privilege of interviewing, you know, this great prophet of God. And um, I asked him, um, on our blessings, I asked him, and I said, when did you receive your call? That was the question I put. I said, when did you receive your call? When did you know you were a prophet? And um, of course, you know, he came from um, an Islamic background. He, the whole family was, you know, is, I mean, Islam. They were Muslims. And so he said, he explained it to me, and I want to. I don't want to take that time. And so, um, I think I believe it's it's still on YouTube. You can take the time and you know watch it, view it. Um, by I did um, our blessings with Apostle Johnson Suleiman, and so you can watch it and you know look at it. There are some that, that are born prophet. They are born. I mean, before they came out of the womb, they were prophet. They were they are born prophet. And there are some that were trained. They were in the prophetic school. They were trained to become prophets. Now, Jeremiah was not trained a prophet. Jeremiah was born a prophet. And so he, he had no idea that he saying yes to the Lord came with persecution, people lying on him, people betraying him, people mocking him. He had no idea. And so when he started experiencing these things, Jeremiah said, Lord, oh my God, you know what? You deceived me. You deceived me because you did not tell me. You didn't tell. You were not honest with me. You see, when God, ha, when God, I want to say, tell you something. When God calls you and all of a sudden he's speaking to you his word. Somebody comes to you or he's speaking to you the prophetic word and God says, you are going to be a millionaire. And God says, you are going to be a leader. And God says, and God says, or that says the Lord, that says the Lord, that says the Lord. Now, all you, you do, excuse me, is I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. But what you don't understand, that from the day the prophetic word was spoken, until the fulfillment of the prophetic word. From point A to point B. In between. God doesn't tell you what is going to happen. From point A to point B. In between. In between. God doesn't tell you what is going to happen. And so now Jeremiah... He was born and he's enjoying, oh my goodness, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. And Jeremiah was prophesying God's word. And, and I believe that he felt good because every word he spoke came to pass. Until the persecution started. Until the betrayal started. Until the rejection started. And Jeremiah now all of a sudden changes his tune and says, Lord, you deceived me. Because you did not tell me that all these things comes with me saying yes to you. And so Jeremiah says, I was deceived. Not only that, but you see, God, look at what is happening. Everybody is mocking at me. When I open my mouth, they begin to mock. Oh, Jesus. Everybody was once a child. And in our childless state, you may have a gift or a ministry, but because you've not been trained, sometimes you make certain mistakes. Okay? It's there. We are human. And so we make certain mistakes once we are exercising our gift. I know of somebody who um, God has called and the person was so angry. I mean, he had, he had this, this, um, you know, of course, flesh, so angry. And, uh, he gets angry 
And in his anger, I mean, because of him, a whole church was closed down. Anger, I mean. And, and, and um, if the Lord gives me the permission, I'll talk about it. The spirit of anger. And the anger has destroyed a whole lot. Lives have been destroyed because of anger. I'm not going there. Families have been destroyed. Marriages have broken because of anger. And so, anger, he was not well refined. And so in his raw state, he made certain mistakes and those mistakes came catching up. And so in our raw state, there are certain things that we don't know. And so we rush and we say certain things and we, we act certain way. And then later, we sit back and we say, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. Now Paul says, I have been young and now I'm old. I was young. And now I have matured. And so in every gift, we have the, um, the, the baby state. We have the maturing state. And we have the matured state. Three stages. The baby state, the maturing stage, and the matured state. And so some of you may be in the, in the baby stage. And so you don't have anybody to guide you. As to, you know, how your giftings and your ministry ought to, ought to be shaped. You don't have anybody to guide you. And so, you have become your own teacher. Okay? You have become your own teacher. You are teaching yourself. And do, if you are in that category, I want you to start now praying to God. That God will send you somebody that would help you and shape in your ministry. Because you see, every ministry is not for you per se. Is because of somebody. God gives us gifts and ministries, not necessarily for us, but he gives it to us so that it will benefit the kingdom of God. It will edify the kingdom of God. Jesus, why am I going here? It will edify, you know, the kingdom. Mm. Arts. Let's go there. I honestly don't really want to go that route, but let's do it. The book of Acts. Mm, 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 mm. Bobo. Ask chapter 2 verse 17. I don't want to do it, but go there, but let's do it. The book of Acts, chapter 2. All right. Let's 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 do. Let's let's start. Let's start from verse 12. When the spirit of the living God came upon, you know, the, um, uh, the apostles and, uh, you know, they started speaking, you know, um, in, in, in an unknown tongue. Um, the Bible says that uh, Jesus said, I have to go. Okay, I have to go because if I don't go, then the Holy Ghost will not come. And the other day I heard a, a mighty prophet, you know, speak about it and it was powerful. He said the Holy Ghost is so, is so mighty. The Holy Ghost is so important that Jesus says there is no need for, for any competition between me and the Holy Ghost. And so I have to get out of the way so that the Holy Ghost will come. Oh, Jesus. I have to get out of the way. In other words, God is saying to us, when that, that word was, oh, no, that, that scripture was quoted. In other words, God is saying to us that we have to allow the flesh. Sometimes the flesh stands in the way. And so the spirit of the Lord cannot have his way. And so we have to allow the flesh. Because remember, Jesus came in the fleshly um, body. He was not a spirit. He came, he lived here on earth. Jesus lived here on earth. And so people that have gone to um, um, Israel, they've seen his tomb and all that. Yeah, Jesus came. He was flesh like you. And so Jesus says, I have to get out of the way so that the Holy Spirit will come. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, oh my God, in those days, Jesus, where am I going? In those days, the Spirit of God will come upon the prophet and he will use them to prophesy and when they are done prophesying the spirit of god will leave them jesus lord holy spirit the spirit of god will leave them but in our dispensation when jesus came and died and before he died he says the disciples says why are you going he says no 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 listen i have to go because if I don't go, now my dispensation, my time here on earth 
is expired. I have to go so that the Holy Spirit can come. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he's not only going to be on you, he's going to be on you, he's going to be in you, he's going to be around, oh my God, he's going to be on you, he's going to be in you, he's going to be around you. And so I have to go because I am standing in the way. And because I am still here in the flesh, the Holy Ghost cannot come. And so I have to get out of the way. So that the spirit of God will come. And so now, Jesus, I want to, oh, look at it for me, my darling. Ha, look at it for me. Let's start reading from verse 12. Acts chapter 2, from verse 12. And they were all amazed and were doubt, saying one to another, what mean is this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They are drunk. You know what? Let's start from the beginning. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, verse 1. They were all with one accord in one place. It's interesting how the spirit of the living God or we are expecting the spirit of the living God to come into a place where there is envy and strife and unforgiveness. And you hear the same people that are walking in unforgiveness, saying that let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit. Hello. Oh, let's invite the Holy Ghost. And, and the worship leader is not talking to somebody in the choir. Oh, God. And let's worship the Lord. And let's invite the Holy Spirit in here. And there is so much division. And yet... We want to invite the Holy Ghost. Uh-uh. Whatever entered that room was not the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is not the altar of confusion. Oh, God. Look at it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord. One. One accord. They were in one accord. One mind. One body. One spirit. They were in one accord. Listen. There is a prayer I pray. Oh, God. And I am... Jesus, where are you taking me this morning, Holy Spirit? There is a prayer I pray. Now listen to me. Lord, let my spirit, my soul, and my body come under divine alignment. Divine alignment. Because if your spirit, soul, and body is or your spirit, your soul, and your body, if they are not aligned, divine alignment, in one accord, you cannot literally buy into the frequency of the spirit of the living God. That is why people have prophesied in error. Why? Because their spirit, soul, and their body are not under divine alignment. Let me not go there, okay? We'll talk about it later. And suddenly, because they were in one accord, oneness, they were in one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rising mighty wind, and it filled the house. One accord. When we are in one accord, and the Spirit of God is genuinely invited, and he enters into the house, he fills the house. Let me shock you. And I did not hear it from somebody. I heard it from the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that sometimes we can, be go, we can go to church and whilst we are in church, everybody is screaming and everybody is shouting and everybody. And yet the Spirit of God is not there. Mm -mm. The Holy Ghost is not there. People are screaming and people are shouting. And you know how they do it. Mm. Mm. And the Holy Ghost is not there. Emotions are being manifested. Flesh is being marketed. Oh God. And so, so oh, the Spirit of God should, nah, -uh. uh uh Because where there is confusion... And the one who is claiming, is prophesying, 
is not talking to the pastor's wife. The one who is claiming is prophesying is not talking to your pastor. You are angry at your pastor and yet, no, 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 it is not. I am telling you, my darling, it is not God. It is not God. Because when your spirit, your soul, and your body are in one accord, and there is unity and true love, because the word of the Lord comes to instruct us, it comes to correct us, it comes to um, uh, motivate us, okay? It comes to rebuke us. Oh, Jesus, let me not go there. And so Jeremiah said, <laughs> Jeremiah said, you really didn't tell me that all these things comes with, with this. And so, Lord, literally, he was saying to God, you lied to me. God didn't lie to Jeremiah. He didn't deceive Jeremiah. If God had told Jeremiah what he was going to go through, Jeremiah would have said no. But God needed a prophet at that time. God needed a vessel that he can speak through at that time. And so there was no way God could, could bypass Jeremiah and use anybody else. Because remember, he anointed him in the womb before he came. And so he cannot bypass him. There was nobody there to use at that time. And so God says, let me tell you something. I am not going to tell you exactly what you are going to go through. But my word is in your mouth. And sometimes we get angry when the persecutions are coming, when people... Now says, I don't believe. Listen, I don't believe any word that comes out of your mouth. You know, I mean, I don't believe. I want to hear God uh, for myself. Go ahead. And indeed, God speaks to us. But you see, he speaks to us according to the level we are in. That is the reason why you may be a prophet. Okay? And as I think it was last week or this week. I said something to you. Every one of us, we are uniquely made, crafted. But I want to submit to you that somebody, it doesn't matter who you are, somebody is better than you. Like myself, somebody is better, much, much better than me. And I accept it because the way God created that one, it's not the same way he created me. And my function may not be the same as the one, the other one functions. Let me give you an example. And it may look kind of too carnal, but I'll give it anyway. Do you know that the same word, John 3.16, can, can be given to 10 pastors or 10 leaders, the same scripture, John 3.16, can be given to maybe 50 people. And interestingly, everybody will come out with a different uh, revelation. The same scripture, but different revelations. The same scripture. They, and they will not deviate from the scripture. No, the same scripture, but different revelations. Okay? Because our level of maturity in the things of God may be different from the level of maturity in somebody else's life. I want you to listen to me. And so, let me give you another example again. Pepper, tomatoes, onions, meat can be given to five people the same thing. And yet, they may put in the same ingredient at the same time. And yet, for some strange reason, mine will not taste like the other person's, even though it's the same ingredient. And so our level of operations are different. Even in the prophetic, I have seen prophets, by the grace of God, and I, see it, I say it with all humility, I have seen prophets that even though they are prophets, they speak the word of the Lord, they, they, they can see and they can prophesy. There are prophets that can only see, but they can't hear. Let me bless you this morning. There are prophets that can only see, but they cannot hear. There are prophets that can hear, but they can see. Oh, Jesus. They can hear, 
the spirit of God, but they cannot see. And there are those that have both. They can see and they can hear. I know a couple of them. They can see and they can hear. Okay? And there are some that even though they are prophets, but their prophetic offices comes with directions. Oh, God. Like they went, the people of, um, of, of, of God went to the prophet and says, Prophet, listen to us. This place is very beautiful. You see, you see that the, you know, Jericho is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. But there is something wrong with the land. And then he says, what is it? They said, the land is barren and the water is bad. They went to Elijah. They said, well, the, 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 you know, there's something. The, 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 the place is beautiful, but the land is barren. Anything we sow in the land doesn't, doesn't germinate. Not only that, but the water is very bad. And the prophet said, prophetic direction. The prophet said, I want you to bring me salt. It's in the Bible. Bring me salt. And they brought the salt to the prophet of God. And the prophet of God went to the source of the water. Where the, the main source of the water is. And the prophet of God threw salt in there and spoke. And according to his word, what he decreed came to pass. Prophetic direction. And so there are prophets like that. Where theirs is, they give directions. And every direction they give you, when you follow the direction, you see results. Just like that. They are there. I've met a lot of them. Now this man here, Jeremiah, was a man that spoke God's word. And when he spoke, because he was not refined. He was not schooled. He was not, in our term we say cultured. He was not cultured. And so when God, let's say, when God, you know, says to, to Jeremiah, prophesy, you know, to the nations that there is war. And, and not only will God say it to him, but he'll begin to see it. Okay? Visualize. He, he, he could see what was about to happen. And because he was compassionate, you see, Jeremiah will be prophesying the word because the spirit of God has taken hold of his body. And, and, and uncontrollably, Jeremiah will be, because remember, the spirit of God will come upon him. And so Jeremiah will be prophesying. Hey, I see war. I see war. I mean, uncultured. Okay. I see war. Repent. War is coming. And the people started laughing at him because to, the, to them, look at this crazy man. Look at him. And so they were making mockery of Jeremiah. There are people watching me. Our time is gone. Oh my God, my time is up. There are people watching me that God has gifted you. And what are the distractions? The distractions are the accusations that are coming against you. The distractions are the betrayals that are coming against you. And so you have literally said to yourself, whatever God says, I'm shutting my mouth. I am not saying it. I'm done. I am done. I'm not saying it anymore. I am not doing what God is asking me to do because people are mocking me. Were you called by people or you were called by God? I have been in meetings where the Spirit of God was showing me something to do. And I'm saying to myself, oh God, if I go and say this thing, people are now going to say, oh, she's now this and she's now that. And when I come home or I go back to the hotel, the whole night, the whole night, I will not be able to sleep because then I'm convicted. I am seriously convicted and my spirit is so uneasy because I disobeyed God. What he told me to say, I did not say it. And then now I'm in trouble with the Lord. It happened to me and my time is up and I'm going to continue when the Lord gives me utterance again. 
it happened to me. I was in um, Virginia, I think like two weeks ago. And Saturday when I went at the program, just as I took over the microphone, the Holy Ghost showed up. And so there was nothing I could do. We just flowed, you know, by the directions of the Lord, we just flowed. But there was something the Lord asked me to tell the people to do. And uh, I was looking at the time and I didn't do it. When I went back to the hotel, oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Jesus, I was in so much trouble. And so the next day when I went to church on Sunday, now I am now asking the people to do it. And it was not effective because when the Lord told me to do it, I disobeyed. I disobeyed. Jeremiah said, you deceived me. God did not deceive Jeremiah. It's just that the Lord did not tell Jeremiah all that he was going to go through when he accepted the call. And so all these things that were coming to Jeremiah's life were just distractions. Jeremiah was being distracted from fulfilling his assignment. Some of you some of you are now babies. If I say baby, I am not talking like you are a baby, no. The gift that God has given, the ministry that God has given you, you are in the baby stage. Some are in the maturing stage and some have matured in it. Don't be distracted because there are a whole bunch of distractions all around us. Focusing on your divine assignment. Focus. Jeremiah nearly was distracted. He said, I'm not going to speak the word of the Lord anymore. I'm done. But then he said, but the word of the Lord is like fire in my bones. Mm. Because of what you are going through, you have literally laid down your mantle. You've laid down your assignment. I believe I'm assigned to do this. And I'm not going to allow distractions. The enemy always brings distractions and uh, wants us to get off track stay in your lane and stay on track because at the end of the day whatever god has said concerning your life is coming to pass somebody will say live in concert is coming to pass i believe i did not touch on a whole lot i will continue by the grace of god yes i will continue jeremiah chapter 20 I will continue. The Lord bless. The Lord bless. I want you to lift up your hand with me. There is somebody watching me. And um, I heard the name this morning. Lucille. Lucille. Somebody is watching me by the name Lucille. And you were called and many, many prophetic utterances have come over your life that you are called to be a prophetess, Lucille, Lucille. And this particular person here, Lucille, I don't know if the person is watching me now or maybe later because it will be on Facebook and, and YouTube and it's on Periscope. Maybe the person will be watching me later. But your name is Lucille. And when you were eight years old, eight, you were taken to a program and a white man prophesied to you that the Lord has put on you the mantle of a prophetess. And as you grew, you are running away from that calling. The Lord wants me 
to tell you, Lucille, pick up that mantle again. Now, what is happening to you is this. All of a sudden, you are forgetting stuff. Okay, you are forgetting stuff. You put, you put something here and you are, you are on that side looking for it. And you, you are the one who put the thing here. But you, are, you forget. It's like you, are, you have this thing coming upon you that you easily forget. If you decide to say yes to the Lord, what is happening to you will just leave. I'm speaking to you, Lucille, whoever you are. When you decide to say yes to God, okay? Lucille, you've been fired two times from your job. On two different occasions, you've been fired from your job. Whoever you are, I don't know you. Two times, you've been fired from your job. And all these things are happening because you are denouncing the calling of God over your life. And listen to me. But the major thing that is happening to you right this minute is you easily forget. Your brain easily goes off. You easily forget. If you can come back and openly lift up your hand and say, Yes, Lord, I am going to do what you have assigned me to do. That thing that is happening in your brain where you easily forget is just going to disappear. Just like that. Just like that. Lucille, whoever you are, listen to God's word. Come back. The gift of God, the anointing of God, Lucille, whoever you are, is not for you. It's for the body of Christ. Somebody needs to hear your voice to repent. Somebody is waiting to hear your voice to be healed. Somebody is waiting to hear your voice for their marriages to be restored. And now you want to deny God the ability to bring deliverance to his people. And so whatever you are going through is not a satanic attack. No. Listen to me. Lucille, whatever you are going through, it is not a satanic attack. You have disobeyed God. And you and I know when we disobey God, it comes with consequences. Pick up your beautiful self and say yes to the Lord. Not only this lady by the name Lucille, but there are a whole bunch of people that are watching me. That are watching me. That you have the call of God upon your life and you are also running. You are running from the call. I don't want people to say, like, like you know, they said of, of Saul, is Saul also among the prophets? I don't want somebody to say, hey, when did she also become a preacher? I don't want, yeah. And so the call of God is there and you are suppressing the call. You are suppressing the call. Now, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. If I had not obeyed God, some of you, would have never repented, been healed, be at peace, learning God's word. If I had said no, I said, Lord, you know what? I know there are, <laughs> back home in Ghana, you know, we say gangarias. <laughs> there are gangarias. <laughs> there, are, there, are, there, are, there are assassinators in the kingdom who call themselves fathers. <laughs> They are in there and they are, they are waiting to kill me. And so, Lord, you know what? I'm not, I'm not doing it. Trust me. I will not be here for somebody's life being turned around. Somebody's life being turned around. Two years ago, and let me say this and I'm going to let you go. Two years ago, I was in my prayer. It was a prayer time for me. And I was just praying. And just like that, I heard it just like that in my voice. Like, I, like you can hear my voice. I heard it in my voice. I am going to put another spirit. It's not a strange spirit. A spirit of the Lord. Upon you. And I'm going to allow you to speak. And then he says, people around the world 
I'm going to hear your voice. Then I'm wondering, Lord, by the grace of God, you make me sing. <laughs> Isn't that enough? <laughs> so one day, I was in prayer. My God, prayer, 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 prayer. And prophetic utterances and prayer was just bubbling out of my spirit, just like that. I put it on a recording and it was distributed. I sent it to somebody in London, a friend of mine. I sent it to somebody in London and uh, she also sent it to somebody and before I knew it, it was all over the world. People, I had a shock the other day. One of my relatives went to India um, because he was, you know, invited there to go and minister the word of the Lord. And they were asking him about his family. And then he says, oh, I have a sister um, by the name um, Sylvia Blessing. And just like that, in India, some remote part of India, just like that, one of, a young man brings his phone and he says, is that that one? And, and he said, yes, that's my sister. And, and the guy said, yeah, I, I, watch, I watch on Facebook. I, I, I watch all the way in India. If I had said no, somebody's life will not be complete. God is waiting on you. To do what he has called you to do. God is waiting. On you. Those of you. Yes the prophetic declarations. Yes. Those of you watching me on Periscope. And on Facebook. God is waiting. On you. I believe. That there are people out there. In the remote regions of the world. That some way, somehow, they have heard people asking them to give their life to Jesus. And they have not. But I believe that God has written, it is written, that maybe I will be the one, when they hear me, they will give their life to Jesus. And so if I close my mouth, I am doing somebody a disservice. Listen to me. You are called in such a time as this to fulfill your God-given assignment. And so don't say, I'm not doing it. Don't say, I'm done. Don't say, because people are laughing like Jeremiah, because people are mocking, and I'm going to continue with it. Because people are laughing, because people are envious, because people are whatever. I'm not doing it. You may be in your baby state. I pray for you that God will bring you mentors that will guide you and will mentor you for you to get to where you ought to be. I believe that with all my heart. And so whatever gift God has given you, don't put it under the rug. Like Jesus gives a parable. You know, Jesus, you know, always spoke in parables. There were people that were given gifts. One was given one, one was given five, and three. And somebody said, you know what, I, I hate my gift. The one says, you know, that, that gift, it was just, you just gave me one. And what am I going to do with one? You just gave me one. So I just... I just hid it. I just threw it somewhere. But the five, the one who got the five, multiplied the gift. But the one who gave, was given one, says, you know what? You only gave me one. What am I going to do with one? They threw it somewhere. Doesn't matter how small or how big your gift may be. Use it. It will benefit somebody. It will elevate somebody. It will bless somebody. Use it. That is the reason why even little children are using their gifts. When you go on YouTube and all this, you, know, you see little children because they understand. 
you can be a grown up. Maybe a little child's ministry will be a blessing to you. Jesus was a little child. And when he entered into the temple and he spoke, the Pharisees, were, their minds were blown. Because look at this little child. Where did he go to school? That this little child, even in his tender age, he used his calling. And because of it, you and I are beneficiaries of the giftings of God. He gave Jesus one. One. And because of him, all of us, all of us are hearing his gospel and we are following him. There is somebody watching me. My time is gone. There is somebody watching me. You are a Muslim. You are a Muslim. You are watching me. And um, you have prayed this prayer before, not today, but you have prayed this prayer before. If this Jesus that all these people are talking about is real, let him reveal himself to me. I want to see him. Because in your religion, Jesus is seen as one of the prophets. You don't believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. You believe that he's one of the prophets. And you are watching me. The Lord will grant your request. I'm saying it again. The Lord will grant. You made a request. If Jesus is really there, I want to see him. You will see him. He will make himself available and real to you. And after you encounter him, you begin to run with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Lift up your hand. Father, I pray for your people this morning. I want to thank you for their lives. For that which you are doing, Father, we say thank you. This is an opportunity you have given us. It is not a right. No, we don't even deserve it. It's an opportunity we have to even do your work. It's an opportunity. I pray, Lord, there are those that have hung their weapons there are those that have thrown in the towel and they said this work is too difficult. Jeremiah said, Lord, you deceived him. No, you did not deceive him. You didn't tell him all that he was going to go through. And so some of us are saying, Lord, you didn't tell me I was going to go through all these things. It's come, it comes with the package. I pray that you give us the grace and the strength to endure. Because the gifting is not for us. It's not for our benefit. It's for the benefit of the kingdom of the living God. I want to say thank you for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to bless God for every one of you. My husband and myself, we bless God for every one of you. And uh, even though my husband is not here, but um, uh, we are two, we are one. And uh, we bless God for every one of you who take the time every morning um, to listen to the word of the living God. And um, I want you to know that we love you. We do. With the love of the Lord. And um, pray for us as we pray for you. Paul said something. He says, pray for us. That we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Because all men have not faith. Pray for us. That we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Because all men have not faith faith. And so I want you to um, um, stay focused. 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 Stay focused because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Now, if you are watching me and uh, you have not given your life to Jesus, you know I always do it. I don't go out without giving you the chance. Um, those of you who are watching me, um, if you have not given your life to Jesus, um, I want you to consider it, okay? 
there is a possibility that you who have not given your life to Jesus, God is waiting on you. That when you give your life to him, he will use you to do mighty works in his kingdom. Let me say this to you. Oh, mother, I love you too. Let me say this to you. We hear so much, and this morning was a revelation my husband was talking to me about. We hear so much about Billy Graham. We hear so much about Billy Graham. If somebody had not witnessed to him, Billy Graham would not listen to me. Look at the thousands of souls that this man have won for the kingdom. Look at the thousands, thousands of souls that he has won for the kingdom. When Billy Graham said yes, doesn't mean that it didn't come with persecutions and all that. Yes, it did. But with his obedience, I believe that there are people watching me. You gave your life probably watching him. You gave your life. And because he said yes to the call, how many presidents in this country, when they were sworn in, Billy Graham stood right there and prayed for them as they were sworn in as president of the United States of America. You have no idea. Your obedience to God will go a long way. Somebody witnessed to me and today I'm winning souls. Give your life to Jesus. Lift up your hand with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, I invite you into my heart. You said if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Therefore, Lord, come into my heart. Be Lord over my life. I give you my life. I give you my life in the name of Jesus. Erase my name from the book of death and hell and write my name in the book of life. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray this prayer, trust me, you don't have to go and kill no goat and, and, and sheep to, to cleanse your sins. No. There's so much craziness going on around the world. And people think they can use Clorox bleach to, to, to ask for forgiveness. Your sins will be washed by spraying Clorox. Jesus. We'll talk about it later. The Lord bless you. Now, I want you to listen to me. Pray for us. As we pray for you. When you go on your knees. Lift us up to God in prayer. Pray for us. Let me give you this last scripture. And I'm going to let you go. Alright. All right. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 3. Verse 2. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 3 verse 2. I'm leaving this scripture with you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Let's start from verse 1. And I'm leaving the scripture with you. And I want you to um, take. Onyami uh, Shrami. Amen Pearl. Amen Pearl. Let's, let's, let's do it. 2 Thessalonians. Let's, let's do verse 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have a free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not 
for all men have not faith. The New Living Translation says, Finally, brother, or finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Pray that the lost message will spread rapidly. I like it. Pray for us. That the lost message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes. Just as when it came to you. Pray too that we will be rescued from wicked and evil people. For not everyone is a believer. I like it in the New Living Translation. Not everyone is a believer. And so my husband and myself and my family, we are asking that you pray for us as we do the work of the Lord. Because there are wicked men and women out there. Sometimes they, were, they are wearing cassock. <laughs> and yet... They are very wicked. And so pray for us that we may be delivered from their hands. The Lord bless you. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Now, you are in God's hands. In his hands, there is mercy and grace and compassion, long life, prosperity, protection are in the hands of the Lord. Outside of God's hands, is persecution and death and destruction and sicknesses and infirmity. Don't ever be in a rush to get out of God's hands. Stay right there. The Lord bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord and I mean it with the love of the Lord. And um, like I said, some of you um, have contributed and the Lord bless you for your contribution and um, we are planning a women's conference. And this women's conference, men can come as well. I don't want to term it a women's conference. Then we are, you know, driving the men away, but it should not be. And so um, we are working on it for location. And it will be given out. And um, I would, you know, urge that literally every one of you will prepare your vacations. Okay, don't, don't take vacation and go, you know, to to Senegal just to go and waste um, money and then when you go to Senegal the witches in Senegal see how beautiful you are and they are coming after you <laughs> and they are coming after you um, you know uh, the day to be given and then you know plan your vacations and um, all of you watching me from all over you know the United States plan your vacations and um, and come and let's seek the face of the Lord I will be in um God, where is it? I will be in Delaware. I will be in Delaware. And then I will also be in New Jersey. And I will be in Michigan. And so all the dates are going to be given. And I will be uh, Mother's Day. Um, I will be in, um, in Connecticut. And so all the um, addresses and stuff will be given. And uh, I want you to come and... Let's put our faith together and let's, let's enjoy in God's presence. I love you with the love of the Lord. Um, if you want to reach us for, for counsel and for prayer and all that, um, you can do that. Those of you who have called, um, I am really going to take time and call you back. I will call you back, okay? And so the number is 914-659-5071, 914 659 5071 and uh, if the Lord touches your heart um, to help us with getting um, the cameras you know uh, um, good cameras where you know services will be you know videoed live and all that you can do that as well go to um, sylviablessings.org and uh, click on XBM Sylvia Blessings Ministry and sow that seed and help us do what God has called us to do and I know he will bless you for it um, you know he uses us he gets the glory and the blessing comes to you and I. Let's do that to the glory of the Lord. I want to join you. Oh, okay. Let me give you the number then. Okay? Let me give you the number. Uh, the number is 712-770. I'm repeating it three times and I'm done. It's 712-770-4160. 
712-770-4160. And then the um the um, um code is two eight three seven two six two eight three seven two six two eight three seven two six and then the pound sign. We meet on um two times um from twelve noon to one okay Eastern Standard Time from twelve to noon to one one hour exactly one hour and then we are back in the evening from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. okay Eastern Standard Time and so you can join us for prayer as well and the Lord will bless you for it I love you oh New Jersey I come to New Jersey all the time I'll be in New Jersey very soon by the grace of God and so the Lord richly bless you and I love you with the love of the Lord and uh, have a glorious a glorious day today have a glorious day and uh, know that you are loved all right okay the Lord bless.